During our mission to the Seychelles, OceanX had a rare opportunity to visit Aldabra, a remote and strictly protected atoll northwest of Madagascar in the Indian Ocean. We were speaking to Dr. Annabelle Constance, the science coordinator at Seychelles Islands Foundation, which manages Aldabra, when she asked an interesting question. Have you heard of the Aldabra affair? We had not, but we were intrigued. It's a really fascinating story and I, I tell it quite often because as a Seychelles it has for me a huge importance that people are aware of this, but also as a scientist. The story starts back in 1965 when the Seychelles was a British colony. To understand why it's important, you need to know a bit about Aldabra. Aldabra is really isolated. In fact, it's uh, more than a thousand kilometers from the main island of Mahe. It's still part of the Seychelles, but it's actually closer to Madagascar. A lot of people understandably don't get to travel to Aldabra, but we all know and love Aldabra. For many Seychellois, it's like the crown jewel of the Seychelles. Aldabra is the biggest coral atoll in the Indian Ocean and the second largest on Earth. The Central Lagoon is more than three times the size of Manhattan. Aldabra has been known for centuries as an incredibly rich ecosystem. It's a vital breeding ground for seabirds, habitat for rare land birds like the flightless rail, a major sea turtle nesting site, is surrounded by stunning coral reefs, and most famously is home to the world's largest remaining population of giant tortoises. There are species in Aldabra, a lot of them that you don't find anywhere else. Charles Darwin himself noted Aldabra's significance back in 1874, and Jacques Cousteau suggested making it a nature preserve after he visited in 1954. Aldabra's isolation and lack of resources like fresh water, farmable land, and guano deposits, the mining of which led to the destruction of many other islands, largely shielded it from direct human impacts. Aldabra is like a baseline for animals and plants in the natural way of being. It's like a living laboratory, basically. It's one of the closest to pristine places left on Earth, but the world came very close to losing it. The Aldabra affair began in April 1965, when it was reported that the British and American governments were planning to build a military facility on Aldabra. It would include an airstrip, a harbor, various buildings, bridges between the islands, and even damming part of the lagoon. The BBC also wanted to build a transmitter. This was a shock to the scientific community. Planning for the project had actually been underway for years, and despite Aldabra's reputation as an ecological marvel, scientists had been completely left out of the conversation. After the news broke, researchers from the Royal Society, a prestigious British scientific group, requested to join the Ministry of Defense on their next expedition to Aldabra in 1966. When they came, they were like, yeah, this place is too important. The scientists' findings confirmed that Aldabra was an almost untouched example of evolution in action. Building there would be disastrous to the ecosystem. Things heated up in 1967 as researchers in both the UK and US lobbied their governments against the plan, and the controversy gained attention in newspapers and scientific journals. Part of the debate played out in letters to the editor in the Times of London, where scientists and civilians spoke out for conserving Aldabra. The situation was also debated in Parliament and was the subject of a TV special called Island in Danger. Meanwhile, the Royal Society planned an extensive expedition to learn as much as possible about Aldabra before it was irreparably altered. They sent a huge group of scientists to research the island. Finally, in 1967, the plans for the military base were abandoned. On November 22nd, the Prime Minister told Parliament that the plans would be scrapped due to budget cuts. Aldabra was spared. However, a base was ultimately built on Diego Garcia, an island 2,800 kilometers to the east. We'll probably never know if it was the economy or pressure from the scientific community that really saved Aldabra. But either way, the Aldabra affair was a catalyst for the research and conservation that has allowed it to remain the amazing place it is today. The 1967 Royal Society expedition provided a wealth of new knowledge about the islands. The group set up a permanent research center there and in 1971, they officially took control of the atoll, allowing them to protect it. After the Seychelles gained independence, the Seychelles Islands Foundation took over as the guardians of Aldabra. 
and in 1982, it became a UNESCO World Heritage Site. These efforts have made Aldabra a conservation success story. Annabelle saw evidence of this when she compared aerial photos of Aldabra from 1960 to similar images from 2011. Going into this, I expected for sure that over a period of 50 years, you would pick up on significant change. But in terms of the coastline, uh, the shape of the vegetation, it didn't change much, actually. It means that it's resilient, but we also have to keep a close eye on how things are changing to continue monitoring and do research to see how the baseline of what we have in 1960, how that is changing with time. Although the threat of a military base has passed, Aldabra still faces challenges. Introduced species like cats and rats interfere with the local ecosystem, plastic pollution is a growing problem, and the effects of climate change are looming. The history of the Aldabra affair makes it even more important not to take this place for granted. It's a rare example of what happens when humans take a step back, listen to the science, and let nature thrive.